Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Hooray. Uh, it's Tuesday. It's seven o'clock. It's time for latte with the librarian. Except I don't. I don't even have tea today. I just have water because I actually just finished dinner. Um, so I just have my water. Refreshing. Can't give you a real review on it because it's just water. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a cup of tea. I have some chamomile uh, that I would like to have. I feel like I'm in the mood for chamomile with maybe a little bit of honey or something tonight. I think that's what I'm in the mood for. Um, to just get some a sample of some white tea with peach, uh, but I believe white tea still has some caffeine in it, so maybe tomorrow morning. <laughs> but for now, it's just water because still digesting just literally finished my dinner 10 minutes ago <laughs> okay so for this week i have a couple of new books to share i forgot to even look on hoopla we can look on hoopla live together um but i have a couple of new books i don't know if any of them are on libby just yet um, but there are some fun ones that I wanted to share and I did post an unboxing video today. I did a quick little live unboxing on Instagram and so it's still on our Instagram. It's saved on there and I just posted it to Facebook uh, an hour or so ago. So you can see there are a bunch of books in that video that are from uh, released this week and a bunch that are being released next week. So it's like a fun little preview so you can see. I love, I love getting to open the boxes. We had three big boxes today of adult and teen books. So that was really exciting for me. It's one of my favorite days of the week, whatever day that happens to be when I get to open a box of books. It's like, it's my birthday every day, except it's definitely not. Um, so that was, that was fun. There were a lot of really good ones in there and a lot of really interesting ones um, that I feel like I might want to, to take a look at. Yeah, we do, we get them, in order for us to be able to process them and get them shelf ready, we do get them early. Sometimes a week early, sometimes two weeks, usually about a week early, uh, which is really nice. And then it's just very, very exciting. Uh, to see what we get and sometimes we get them a little bit late there were a lot of things in that box that we got that were a little bit late uh, but we got them and that's the important thing is that they're going on the shelf for everybody to see um, so tomorrow I know Miss Kathy has already said she's really excited to get those books shelf ready tomorrow uh, so that we can get them out for everyone. It's just so much fun for all of us because we love looking through them when we get the big box and when we see what's on the table ready for processing, which is what we call it when we get them shelf ready. It's just such a fun process and like I just keep saying, I just love looking through everything and seeing what we get. So if you haven't seen that unboxing video either here or on Instagram, it was from today, so it's there. Um, I did finish reading. I finished at the end of last week um, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. <laughs> my, I wish that were my whole job. <laughs> I don't know. You'd be... You'd be surprised. I wish my whole job were, were un actually I don't. I love all the facets of my job, uh, but there are a lot of facets of my job. Um, but it is nice the days where I get to open the boxes of books or order the books and just look through the books because it's just like a little, it's like a little reprieve from all of the other stuff. Um, but, I mean, but that's, you know, that's why I like sharing the fun stuff with all of you, because then just is more fun to share it with everybody. I like sharing the fun stuff so that you all can have the fun, too. Um, but, yeah, there are a lot of facets to being a librarian, but I only show you the really fun stuff. <laughs> like cooking or opening boxes of books. <laughs> you get to see the fun, fun stuff. <laughs> um but it is a good time. We do have fun. I think a lot of you know us well, and a lot of you are getting to know us. And you could tell we have a lot of fun together. We're a good group. Uh, I'm very, very, very lucky um, to be part of this library. I love it. 
it's a lot of fun. And it's really fun that everybody gets as excited as I do. Uh, like when we see UPS coming, like, is that for us? Is UPS for us? <laughs> and then it usually is, and we get so excited. And it's everybody, oh, you're going to get a box of books. Um, or when Janet gets a box of DVDs and audiobooks, we play a game where we try to guess what's in it. I mean, we just have so much fun with all of the new releases and getting them ready to share with all of you. So <laughs> we just, we're just as goofy as we can be just to let off some steam. <laughs> right, so yeah, so I finished the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Woo, that took me on a ride. That took me on a ride. The ending of that book, I will say, is pretty gruesome. Um, I know that some people, when I after afterwards, when I'm reading a book, I don't usually like to read the Goodreads reviews until after because I don't want to be spoiled and I don't want what people say to shape my opinion. So when I was done, I went and I read some Goodreads reviews, and some people felt that there was a lot of gore in the book. I only thought the ending was gory. Like the ending is rough ending is rough but that southern book club has a guide to slaying vampires like that's not a spoiler because the entire title is a spoiler like you know it's going to happen you just don't know how you don't know how you're going to get there and then there are there are points in the story where i'm like it can't really be what the title says it is and spoiler yeah yeah it is the author lays it out there um and it's just but the process of them getting there, like I said last week, um, there was a, like, okay, three years later, but what happened in that time? What happened? How does everybody pretend that it's okay? And it just comes out that they, there really just was a lot of pretending. And I did see some reviews on Goodreads where people were criticizing the portrayal of black people and women. And I kind of feel like the author did that on purpose. It takes place in the 90s. It takes place in a Southern culture. And like I keep saying, it really reminds me of the neighborhood from Edward Scissorhands. And I think the author did that on purpose because everything is so neatly playing into these terrible stereotypes where people are like criticizing that nobody cared about the black neighborhood. But it was like that on purpose because that's how our villain of the book gets away with the things he gets away with even though the one woman is like it's so obvious why are we ignoring these children doesn't matter that these children are not our white children they're they're being harassed and killed you know so i understand that people want to be aware and people want to make sure that we have inclusive literature where we're not putting people down but i think that may have been the author's point to to say like look at how stereotypical these women are with their housewife roles with their cleaning and the children and and the husbands are the breadwinners who are controlling the women and they keep trying to put a stop to their book club and this and that and they take over the book club and but that's the point because that's how it lets all of these things keep escalating if it were a more woke book where, you know, women have different roles and we care about the neighborhoods where people of color are living and we invite them to not live in crappy neighborhoods, you know, and stick them there, the book would have been completely different and it just wouldn't have had the same effect. And I just feel like that was the kind of the point, that that was kind of what the author was going for. Um, and that's probably why, like I keep saying, I keep picturing all of those like pastel colored houses with these women who all have these little personalities, but they still fit into the same neighborhood mold. And that's why I keep picturing that because I feel like that was the point. Um, but yeah, the ending was quite gruesome. And, you know, but it was great because these women just came together and took control and at a certain point, I felt like they were so casual about it. I was like, oh, oh my God, how could they do that? And they were like, doing what we got to do. Doing what we got to do to protect our neighborhood and our children. <laughs> so if you do want to read the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, it was really good. It goes really fast. It does get a little gory and gruesome there. Um, I would say the back, the back third of the book gets a little gory and gruesome. Uh, there are small mentions of it in the beginning where she's still trying to figure out what's going on and then it does get a little gorier at the end, but not like Stephen King scary gory, just 
How do you kill a vampire, Gory? How do you kill a vampire that won't die, Gory? And that's all I'll say. <laughs> it was entertaining, though. Um, like I also mentioned, I am finally finishing up this, um, the American Royal sequel for teens. It's cute. Like I keep saying, it's cute. I can understand why teens like it. I can understand um, it totally fits into that, like, CW freeform ABC family kind of mold with the drama and the friendships and the romance and learning about yourself and sticking up for yourself. Um, and then of course there's all this drama about the American royal family. It's an alternate reality book if you don't remember. So um, I'm going to work on that this week and um, I may take home some of the new stuff. We have to see. We have to see what's still there on Friday. Um, there are a couple of teen books that I would love to read, uh, some of the award winners, which I posted. What day is today's Tuesday? Yesterday was Monday. The awards, the Youth Media Awards were announced yesterday. Um, I do want to talk about some of that too. I'm just going to quickly read off a couple of new titles for this week for adults. And I do want to talk about the Youth Media Awards because I, I love them. Um, so I did post that. So I think I might want to try to read some of those. We do have most of them at the library. Um, every now and then there's always a wild card. You're like, oh, I missed that book or I didn't order it because I, I wasn't so sure about it. And uh, But we have most of them, which I'm really excited about. It makes me feel good when I'm like, oh, I ordered that book and I was excited about it. And now it's an award winner because I like sharing quality things with everybody. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um... Uh, oh, this one, I talked about this in the unboxing. This one came out today. This is a nonfiction. It's called Chatter, The Voice in Our Head, Why It Matters, and How to Harness It. This is by Ethan Cross, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet lately about, um, and I think a lot of people had time to really think about this while they were home for several months and if they're still home um, how we talk to ourselves in our head do we have a voice in our head do we not kind of a thing so I thought this was a really interesting book um, an award-winning psychologist reveals the hidden power of our inner voice and shows how we can harness it harness it to live a healthier more satisfying and more productive life Tell a stranger that you talk to yourself and you're likely to get written off as eccentric. But the truth is that we all have a voice in our head. When we talk to ourselves, we often hope to tap into our inner coach, but find our inner critic instead. When we're facing a tough task, our inner coach can buoy us up. Focus, you can do this. But just as often, our inner critic sinks us entirely. I'm going to fail. They'll laugh at me. What's the use? In Chatter, Ethan Cross explores the silent conversations we have with ourselves, interweaving groundbreaking behavioral and brain research from his own lab with real-world case studies uh, from a pitcher who forgets how to pitch, a Harvard undergrad negotiating her double life as a spy, uh, etc., etc. Cross explains how these conversations shape our lives, work, and relationships. Um, and it just talks about, you know, disorienting self-talk, chatter, how we can use this to improve or tank our social connections, our moods, just our health. Um, I actually, I was taking a nutrition seminar last week and um, the person running it, who's a functional nutritional therapy practitioner, um, said that like a body under stress does not give a you know what about your health goals and when I read the blurb for this I was like oh we were just talking about that in our seminar that like if you have this whether you're under stress um or you're like perpetuating this stress in your head it really affects your health so I thought that was interesting to pull this book out today um and it says the good news is we're already equipped with the tools we need to make our inner voice work in our favor these tools are often hidden in plain sight um so it just talks about like how to harness that and it's expertly researched, filled with compelling stories, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I thought that one sounded really interesting. Um, this one is by an author who usually writes young adult uh, fiction and romance. Um, <clears throat> uh, her name is Rachel Lynn Solomon, but this is her, her adult romance debut. It's called The X Talk, and I actually already recommended it to somebody and loaned it out to her um, because I just thought it was so cute and she was looking for something fun and easy to read. 
Um, oh, this one doesn't have a blurb. Uh, a debut adult romance by the author of Today, Tonight, Tomorrow, that's an adult book, finds an experienced public radio producer and a newcomer with a master's degree clashing over the advice they administer during an unexpectedly popular radio show. So, I mean, that sounds really cute. I'm hoping to read it when she is done with it. <laughs> um, another new release today, uh, Laura Childs has another Cackleberry Club mystery. This is called Egg Shooters. This is one of those great cozy mysteries that also has recipes. Uh, I know some people are looking for not always the the hardcore mysteries, thrillers, um, and just a reminder that we have those book, books like Laura Childs, there are always some new ones that are coming out, so don't forget about those. Um, is there anything? Um, and then in the same vein, we also got today and was released today, uh, a new Lucy Stone mystery from Leslie Meyer, The Irish Parade Murder. Um, so that one uh, is, of course, for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up. So that one is new today as well. Um, let me see. If I can pull up my, I'll just pull it up here. I don't know why I'm grabbing my phone. Um, <laughs> the Youth Media Award winners. There it is. Uh, this is the recording. It was so exciting. Of course, it was all virtual this year. Um, the Newberry Medal, the winner was When You Trap a Tiger, written by Tay Keller. Um, so that's children's literature. The Newberry is usually like middle grade, but sometimes it's been surprisingly some picture books. Um, sometimes it's been things that border between tween and teen. I mean, Newberry really, I mean, there are so many different uh, choices that they could do for that. The Caldecott Medal was We Are Water Protectors, which is illustrated by Michaela Goad and written by Carol Lindstrom. Let's see what other ones. Um, the Coretta Scott King. There, then here's the other thing. Not everybody knows that there are more awards than just the Newberry and the Caldecott and the Prince. And not everybody even knows about the Prince, which is the Teen Book Award. Um, there's also the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, recognizing an African-American author and illustrator of outstanding books for children and young adults. The author award goes to Jacqueline Woodson uh, for Before the Ever After. I love Jacqueline Woodson. Um, she's a fantastic speaker, author. She writes books for several different ages. Really just a well-spoken, well-put-together um, author who just puts out those kinds of books too, um, that are just well put together and well written and complete and whole. Um, the Illustrator Award goes to R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, which is illustrated by Frank Morrison. And then of course there are always all these honor books, um, like Mildred D. Taylor, All the Days Pass, All the Days to Come, which is the latest book from the Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry series, uh, was one of the honor books for author. Let's see, let's see. Oh, and then there's the New Talent Award, the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe New Talent Award, and that was Legend Born, written by Tracy Dion, which is a teen book, which I ordered a while ago and was super excited about. It just looks cool, it sounded cool, so I was really glad that that one won. It got really good reviews and some, some buzz online, so I love seeing that. Um, the Prince Award for Young Adults was Everything Sad is Untrue, a true story um, by Daniel Nyeri, um, and that's one. That one, I had. I had all of the other ones in the collection. This one, I did not know. This one was um, like a wild card. I don't even. I don't even remember the reviews. I'm gonna look it up. Everything sad is unnatural. And I did just order it the other day to make sure that we get it into our collection because, of course, yeah, it did have some starred reviews actually. But it came out um, in August, so that's probably why I missed it. Um, but also that happens, and I know a lot of people were talking about it. I'm in a Goodreads group um, for, like, mock Prince Awards where we read throughout the year different books that we think um, are award-worthy. And some people were like, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Um, Apple, Skin to the Core, which I reviewed on... Um, 
Fifteen Reads is one of the honor books. Dragon Hoops, which is a graphic novel. Everybody Looking and We Are Not Free. Those are all pretty new. It's a really diverse collection of winners and honors, which is awesome. So awesome. Um, the Schneider Family Book Award for books that embody an artistic expression of the disability experience. Um, the winner was, I believe it's a picture book, um, is called I Talk Like a River. Um, the one for young adults is called This Is My Brain in Love, which I forget when that one's about, but we have that one and I really like, really like the cover, which is just very silly, but sometimes we judge book by the cover. Um, let's see, this is my brain in love. I forget what that one's about. Last year there were um, a couple of teen ones. One that I think had to do with uh, the deaf and hard of hearing community. I think it was about sign language. And the other one which was just about chronic illness. Um, so it's good to see that recognized as well. So yeah, This Is My Brain in Love explores mental health, race, and ultimately self-acceptance. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so it talks about like social themes, mental illness, loners and outcasts, family prejudices, so. That's interesting. Um... There are also the Alex Awards, which are the 10 best adult books that appeal to teen audiences. Um, they have a bunch on there. Mildred D. Taylor won the Children's Literature Legacy Award this year. Again, it's the Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry uh, series, which was a Newbery Medal winner when it came out in 1977, um, which is awesome. And the rest of the series, it looks like, won Coretta Scott King Awards, The Road to Memphis. And then, of course, this one, All the Days Past, All the Days to Come. Let's see. Oh, the Odyssey Award is Best Audiobook Produced for Children and or Young Adults which is awesome. Kent State was the winner for that one. There are some honor awards, Clap With You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. She narrates it herself, and if it's anything like with the fire on high, her narration is excellent. She knows her characters, she knows the cadence of her story so well. Uh, Clap When You Land is a dual story told from two perspectives. And then Stamped, Racism, Anti-Racism, and You by Ibram X. Kendi and Jason Reynolds, and it's narrated by Jason Reynolds, so... That's why that audiobook got an honor, because Jason Reynolds is a great narrator and storyteller. Miss Marie and I have. He's, he's our author crush. We all joke that we all have, like, author crushes, and Jason Reynolds is ours. We love him. Um, the Porter Bell Prey Awards, uh, honoring a Latinx writer and illustrator. There's some for children's and young adults. Um, and Young Children, Never Look Back is the young adult one, which I didn't have, so I ordered. And then We Are Not From Here, which I did have. Um, informational books, there's the Robert F. Seibert informational book. Like, there are just so many awards, and you can look it all up um, by going to the ALA, the American Library Association website. Um, but one of the ones that I thought was really interesting uh, for like tweens and teens is All 13, The Incredible Cave Rescue of the Thai Boys Soccer Team. I'm sure many of us remember that. Um, that got a couple of honors and awards this year as well. Um, the Stonewall Book Award, uh, which is given annually to English language children's and young adult books of exceptional merit relating to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender experience. These are always some of my favorite books because of just with the authenticity that they are written with. Um, the winner is actually a children's book called We Are Little Fem Feminists Family. Um, hello! We're talking about books, licorice. <laughs> She's over it. You Should See Me in a Crown, which is for young adults, which we have. Felix Ever After, which we just got today because for some reason I didn't have it. It was sitting in a wish list cart for some reason. I'm so excited to read it. Um, and Darius the Great Deserves Better. And Darius the Great, the first one, is not okay. Definitely won an award. Uh, either it was last year or two years ago. 
the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award for Most Distinguished Beginning Reader Book. Um, it's called See the Cat, Three Stories About a Dog. There are some really cute ones on that list. Um, William C. Morris Award for Debut Book. There are quite a few. Um, if These Wings Could Fly by Kiri McCauley is the winner. The Black Kids is one of the ones that we have in the teen room by Christina Hammonds Reed. Um, I always forget that she's a debut author, but that one also got a lot of great awards. And then the Award for Excellence in Nonfiction for Young Adults. This is interesting. So again, all 13 is on there. Um, How We Got to the Moon is one of the honors. You Call This Democracy, which we have in the teen room uh, that I've spoken about before. And the winner was The Rise and Fall of Charles, L Charles Lindbergh by Candace Fleming. It's apparently like a really good, really interesting read. Um, and I missed that one, so I'm actually really excited to read that one. And I think the teens will like it too. Um, there are also awards, uh, the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature. Uh, when You Trap a Tiger was on there again. Uh, this Light Between Us, Displacement, which I reviewed for... Teen Reads, which was really good. That's a graphic novel. It was awesome. I love the way it was told. Uh, the Sydney Taylor Book Award annual presented annually to outstanding books for children and teens that authentically portray the Jewish experience. Um, the picture book category welcoming Elijah, a uh, Passover tale with a tail, with a tail. Um, uh, Turtle Boy in the middle grade ca uh, category, and the young adult one was I don't want to be wrong because I know there was more than one. Uh, Dancing at the Pity Party was the winner for the teens, which is a graphic novel. Um, and They Went Left by Monica Hess was the uh, honor for the young adult character uh, category. Um, and Marie and I really like Monica Hess's books. So I mean those are all the categories. They're so varied. There are so many. Um, I know a lot of people get excited for like awards season, you know, like the Oscars and the Emmys and stuff, but this is my awards season. <laughs> that and Tony season, which we don't have right now. Um, we tried to have Tony season, but we did not have the Tonys. Uh, but I love, I love book awards. I love in the summer when they do Comic Con, they do the Graphic Award, uh, the Eisner Awards. Those are some of my favorite awards too. Um, actually, I love looking at the Eisner Awards list. And there are, there are always, you know, the National Book Awards, everything. So, you know, if ever you're not sure what to read and, you know, you're like, oh, well, I've asked the librarians a million times, you can ask us again. We don't mind. You can ask us. Um, but also, you can check out, just check out awards lists. Just look up National Book Award, um, Youth Media Awards, the Eisner Awards, um... There are ones for sci-fi, there are ones for mystery. Just look up book awards and they'll tell you the ones that um, across the board people loved, were well-reviewed, were big hits, the Goodreads Choice Awards that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. There are just so many ways to find books that you may be interested in. So, yeah. So it was an exciting week so far and it's only Tuesday. It feels like it's been a really long week. I don't know. I guess I feel like I had like two days because I worked, like two extra days because I worked and I did a bunch of stuff in the morning. Then I took a break and I watched the media awards for about an hour or so. And then I like had a whole other like start over work day. <laughs> um, and then Tuesdays are always long because I go to the building on Tuesdays and then I come and I do a bunch of stuff at home. And then I come and I talk to you. So Tuesdays seem really long. So by Tuesday night, I'm like, what year is it? Hey, you didn't want to say hi today? That's okay. She's here. There she is. Look at her. Say hi. Hey. There she is. And then you can see on the corner of my table, I did a puzzle this weekend too, um, which was fun. So keep them busy over here. Keep them busy. We're, we're planning our spring and summer. And like I said, ordering tons of new books, coming up with fun stuff. So just keep checking our website uh, for more updates. And of course here on our social. And uh, 
tomorrow, no, you can't jump up there. Uh, tomorrow we have book cooks. I'm making sausage pasta from Jamie Oliver's new book called Seven Ways, which is really cute. So I'll talk about that tomorrow. I keep saying it's cute. It's just such an inventive idea, and I really like the idea of it for a cookbook. Um, and then the week after, there are going to be little short videos on Super Bowl dips and side dishes every day of the week. And then the book cooks next week will be um, just like a fun party party plate. Not party plate, but like party recipe. So there's some fun stuff coming up. Hey, okay, she's sitting on my lap. So she's settling in, which means it's time for me to go make my cup of tea and enjoy the rest of my night, which I hope you all do as well. Stay warm and cozy and enjoy whatever it is you're going to do tonight, whether you're going to watch TV, read a book, watch a movie, whatever it is, I hope you enjoy and I hope you have a wonderful night and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for book cooks. If not, I will see you all soon. All right, everyone. Bye.